stuff. Uh, running workshops and, and, and doing all kinds of things like that. Uh, collaborating with, uh, with Judy Lewis, uh, who was a, a former student of mine who, who works over in the Rancho Cordova Unified School District and who put together a, a big project to train educators about people from Southeast Asia and who has uh, just recently donated her large collection of Southeast Asian materials to the CSU library and I'll, I'll tell you more about how you can gain access to those materials uh, uh, in, in the coming weeks. Uh, in 19, uh, 1979, uh, uh, I was uh, offered a, a senior Fulbright Hayes Research Fellowship at the University, uh, at the Institute for Southeast Asian Studies in the Republic of Singapore. Uh, and uh, so I went there and uh, was given a house and a car and lots of money and, and a big office, and all I had to do was to sit there. And, think. <laughs> I didn't have to give you know, classes or I had to write papers. Uh, and I was thinking, ah, oh, Southeast Asia, jungle, nature life and stuff. And I went to Singapore, which is no jungle, no nature life, the most fast modern city in the world, okay? So leaving Sacramento in 1979, going to Singapore was like leaving rural Mexico and going to Bonn or something. Uh, it was a very fast modern place, much cleaner, much better run than anything I was, had experienced here in the United States. And I found myself working <coughs> more than I'd ever worked before because I was involved in doing a study of varieties of Chinese medicine uh, in Singapore uh, and uh, Malay medicine and other things. And, 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 and in the story that I'll tell you later when we talk about Singapore, uh, people assumed that I was somehow working for the Minister of Health and, and so everybody wanted me to come and visit their clinic and see their training program. And, and so I, was, I worked and worked and worked and worked. It was a really busy year. Uh, when I came back uh, from, from there, uh, uh, I, I rejoined my relationship with the psychiatry department in Davis, began teaching here again at Sac State. Uh, and soon after that, I got sucked up in Chancellor Reynolds plan to, to change the curriculum. And out of that came the foundation of a the Asian Studies program here at the university, and that took forever to try to put together the Asian Studies program on a campus where people really didn't know much further than places like Stockton or Davis in terms of foreign things. Okay, so that was a major battle at that point. The university is a very different kind of place now with faculty who come from those faraway places and, and make it a much more interesting place. But back in those days, people from Sacramento seemed to, at state mostly seemed to have come from Iowa. <laughs> and, uh, and, 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 so, and so convincing them that there was something worth about doing this thing. Uh, in 19, uh, all, all through the course of all this, and I, 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 I work on my Borneo studies and I, and I write papers and, and, and publish them and go to conferences and stuff. I'm a fellow of the Borneo Research Council and of the Royal Ecological Institute involved in these sorts of things. Uh, but, uh, but I really wanted to go back to Borneo. I, I missed, I missed uh, my, my Lundaya and, and, and the things there. So finally in 1992, uh, I, 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 I get a grant from the university to go to Borneo to, to establish a Highland Research Institute. And, uh, Turns out that that Highland Research Institute was not going to fly, at least from the point of the Malaysian government, uh, too close to the border and uh, too sensitive from their perspective to have a bunch of Western scholars wandering around looking at plants and people's armpits and things. Uh, and so, uh, but while I was there, uh, the Mundaya, uh, uh, up in the northern part of Sarawak, invited me to come up and and talk and, 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 and they said that you know we remember your visit and people talk about you and, and we face this problem our language and our our, our oral literature is, 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 is eroding and we fear to lose it and, uh, and we'd like to write a dictionary of the language but the people cannot agree to work with one another and hold animosities from the headhunting days and other sorts of, uh, of things uh, slavery and the like uh, but they said they'll all work with you so could you help us do that? And so, you know, you know, if you give, then you have to, if you take, you have to give, okay? Uh, Southeast Asia is all about reciprocity. And so I said, well, okay, I, I will do that. And so beginning in 1992, uh, and with the exception of two summers, since 1992 up to this present, I spent every summer in Southeast Asia uh, on the island of Borneo, climbing around the mountains, going from village to village, collecting words 
uh, collecting uh, songs and, and stories uh, for this dictionary, which is now finally done uh, and, 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 and will be published both here in the United States uh, and in Malaysia. Uh, and what I'm working on right now is a, is a book about all those years uh, uh, of tra traveling around uh, parts of, uh, of northern and north central Borneo uh, from an anthropological perspective and the things that I learned about the nature of their, their belief systems and the problematics of, uh, of making sense of other people's lives. Uh, anyway, that's the bias that I bring to this course. That is, this is the, those are the nature of my contacts. Uh, I travel all over Indonesia and, uh, and, and all over Malaya and, and all over Borneo. Uh, and I've never been to Burma or to Thailand or to Vietnam uh, or to Cambodia or to East Timor to, or to the Philippines in that sense. So most of those places I know about only from reading the works of other scholars who've, who've been there. Uh, my bias is the, is the insular part of Southeast Asia, and that's why I use this book, uh, Charles's book, uh, The Golden Peninsula, to, to balance out the coverage of the, of the mainland part of Southeast Asia. Uh, Southeast Asia uh, is, a, is a term which is very new. Uh, it was not used uh, until the beginnings uh, of the 20th century. It was used originally by a German art historian, a by the name of Heger, H-E-G-G-E-R. Uh, Heger was working uh, uh, in analyzing material from an archaeological site uh, in the plain of the Black River uh, in what is today the northern part of the Republic of Vietnam, Democratic Republic of Vietnam. Uh, he was trying to make sense of this place, of how the people live in this place, and he noted the discrepancy between the presence of house posts, which suggested the people built their houses up off the ground on post, which is the, the pattern for most people in Southeast Asia, and the fact that they also had the lab work to decorated arms, drums, or gongs, which was a, uh, looked like things found in, uh, further to the north in China. So he decided to say that this is a, a culture somewhere between one and the other, and he came up with the term Sudest Asia, or Southeast Asia. Uh, nobody knew this term, and other terms were used to describe the region by other scholars. Americans sometimes called it the Pacific Far East, or the Far Eastern Tropics, uh, or Monsoon Asia, the part of Asia where there are monsoon winds. Sometimes it was referred to as Further India because of the architectural uh, use of Indian uh, styles of sculpture and uh, the influence of Hinduism and Buddhist philosophy in parts of Rome and Southeast Asia. Uh, but, uh, but one Englishman knew of this, and it was a man from the royal family by the name of Lord Mountbatten. Lord Mountbatten, uh, whose grandfather was the Kaiser Wilhelm of Germany, okay, loved all things German. And when Britain and Germany went to war, ultimately it was decided to use Mountbatten, who served in the Royal Navy, best against the Japanese. So he didn't think he liked the Japanese like he liked the Germans. He ultimately took over command of, uh, of part of the war effort against Japan uh, in, in the Pacific region. Uh, from a headquarters that he established in Colombo, you know, on the island of Ceylon, what is now the country of Sri Lanka. Okay. Uh, in the war effort against Japan, the plan was to divide it up into theaters of war, theaters of action, and there was a North Pacific uh, region under Admiral Kimball, a Central Pacific region under Admiral Chester Nimitz, a Southwestern region under the commander of General MacArthur, uh, a uh, uh, an East, region, East Asian region under the command of General Stilwell, who was an advisor to uh, the nationalist forces of Chiang Kai-shek. Uh, and then the rest of this, the place that we're talking about, came under Mountbatten. And Mountbatten said, I'll call it Southeast Asia Command, because he'd actually read Hager's little article. And so that's where the term was first used, not until uh, uh, the middle part of the uh, fourth decade of the 20th century. Southeast Asia has caught on now, and, and everybody used it, including people who live in Southeast Asia, who describe their, uh, their regional association as the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN. Uh, if you read the word and it has no 